All right, y'all, it's about to go down. Uh, Google just dropped another bomb on us. It's the same bomb. It just keeps going off. Uh, this blog was released yesterday. Um, shout out to Colin on my team for bringing it to my attention. Um, it's them talking about Flock and the implementation. They're actually rolling it out, and so we're getting a little bit more in the way of details. You already know some of this stuff, but I'm going to go over it anyway because it's just a good refresher. Um, so I really love this. We had seen that cookie blocking was already spawning privacy invasive workarounds such as fingerprinting, which Google used. Um, that's so funny to me. That's so funny to me. They're like, what a interesting high horse to be on, given that that horse has been trotting through mud. Uh, overall, we felt that blocking third party cookies outright without viable alternatives for the ecosystem was irresponsible and even harmful to the free and open web we all enjoy. Let's just pause for a minute and think about all of the times Google said, nope, and just wholesale killed things that are, you know, both irresponsible and, what, what was the other word they used? Uh, harmful. Come on, y'all. This is a really interesting system of posturing. And, and it's relevant. It's relevant because, uh, and I'll, I'll explain here as we keep going. Um, Flock is still in development, which is important for all of us to know. That means that th this stick that we're getting beat with can grow. Um, I mean, it might also, they might backpedal a little bit too, but just, just be aware that the stuff that they're saying now isn't necessarily the end of it. Uh, expected to evolve based on input from the web and community, blah, blah, blah. I don't think we're going to get much in the way of input. Um, so here's what's happening is when you're in a flock, they're, they're taking you as a person and, you know, advertisers used to be able to follow you around and they're putting you in a group of people that's then anonymized. And it's interesting the way that it's working. It's actually, it's actually really brilliant. It's really, really brilliant. It's going to ruin my life, but it's really, really smart. Cohorts are defined by similarities in browsing history, but they're not based on who you are individually. That's a that's a gray line because your browsing history is indicative of who you are. You're intrinsically qualifying your interests based off of where you go. So I don't know how they can really say that they can separate those two things as opposed to, I mean, maybe they're just saying like, look, we're not taking demographic information in consideration at all, which is fine. Um, that will, if that's true, that's going to hurt advertisers significantly. Um, that's you and me, by the way. Uh, in fact, the cohort you're in frequently changes as your browsing history changes. That's interesting to me. That's really interesting. And that makes sense. You know, you're uh, in an in-market audience, so to speak. And then when you leave, like you're shopping for a car and then you're not, or you're about to have a baby and then the baby comes. And so your cohort is, is adjusting and sort of growing with you. It is weird to me, though, that you're only a, you're only a part of one cohort. I assumed that one person, it was like a Venn diagram of cohorts, and you'd be in various cohorts, but it really feels like Google's like, no, we're just putting, we're putting everybody into one cohort, into one flock. Um, if that's the case, it, f it still feels a little opaque, but if that's the case, that's a pretty sterile two-dimensional way to approach this. Um, your browser determines which cohort corresponds most closely to your uh, recent web browsing history. So you're being grouped with thousands of other people. And, and they use that, um, that line of demarcation regularly, by the way, thousands. So it feels like 9,999 or less-ish. Um, there's an identification number for each cohort. So this is going to be really interesting. Certain cohorts are going to be more valuable than others, obviously. And it looks like we're going to have the opportunity to identify and then potentially bid for cohorts. Think about that. Think about what's going to happen to the competitive ecosystem from a cost perspective when instead of being able to bid on individuals based off of their individualized interest, everybody's just amalgamated into great big buckets. And you know, Google's like, hey, here's everybody who's interested in advertising. Here's everybody who's interested in buying water bottles or bottles of water or whatever. Um, you're going to get people who overbid. It's actually freaking brilliant, man. It's, it's on Google's side. They're going to make more money because their dollar cost averaging all of their prospects and so if you're, if you're an attorney and you want to get in front of people that want, you know, I don't know what, business exit planning, and there's a cohort for that, you'll pay anything for, to get in front of those people. And you're probably willing to pay more than other people might be willing to pay based off of your monetization model. Um, and you're going, to pay, you're going to pay for the awareness and interest of prospects that wouldn't necessarily, there's, there's a hierarchy inside of that cohort. And historically, we were able to kind of segment hierarchically um, and say, like, show me the people that are, you know, most interested based off of the intrinsic qualification provided by the data that I have. You don't have that anymore. So now it's just like, all right, I want all the people in this cohort and I'll pay whatever. Um, the, the way that this is going to impact our bid structure is going to be really interesting to me. 
Um, man, that's that's oh god, I'm not I'm not looking forward to this. Especially think about my business. There's gonna be there's gonna be a cohort for people interested in Google Ads. So, I mean, I don't know that it even gets that granular. Maybe they're just interested in marketing, or maybe it gets so granular that it's like, well, they're interested in you know DSA specifically. Like I don't know I don't know how specific these cohorts will get, but regardless, you're gonna get every Tom, Dick, and Harry that knows how to run a Google Ads campaign, and they're gonna be pushing all of their ads in front of these cohorts at a, at a, at a at an untethered cost in some instances. Uh, everyone in the ads ecosystem, including Google's own advertising products, will have the same access to Flock. I don't know what that means yet. I also think, here's the thing that I think is really interesting, and this is what I was referring to above. Google is taking themselves out of the privacy discussion. The only way that they could identify which prospects belong in which, oops, my alarm is going off, which prospects belong in which flock is if they're actually tracking prospects on an individual basis. So there's no like salted hash security um, that, that keeps Google from knowing what you're doing. They're just keeping other people from knowing what you're doing. And so Google becomes, you know, the all seeing big brother government body. Um, they're not, they're not restricting this data from themselves, algorithmically speaking, at least if they are, I don't understand it. Um, and I mean, that's really interesting. It's like, hey, y'all, don't worry. We'll take care of you. You know, where have we heard that before? This just got really scary. Uh, Chrome browser won't create groups that deem sensitive. That's also really interesting. So Google has, they have this sensitivity of cohorts document that might be worth reading. It, it I don't know. It was a little over my head, to be frank. Just the, some of the assumptions that they've made about how they deem uh, information to be sensitive felt either I'm not smart enough to understand it, or they're just they're speaking in very vague generalities, which is which is how it felt. But it's it's good to know that that there's going to be just certain. I mean, this is going to wipe out certain um, marketing channels and the ability to, to advertise medical websites or websites with political or religious content. God, that's a lot. That's a lot. With political content, really? Websites with political content? You mean all the sites? Um, sites can opt out of Flock? That's interesting. Probably for the best, but very interesting. Uh, and then later, they're going to uh, introduce a setting in Chrome that allows you to opt out of Flock if you want to. But I find that to be interesting, too, because if you opt out of Flock, then what? Um, is it just the complete lack of personalization in ads? Uh, I mean, Google's still going to track you. So there's this really good article here. What is uh, Federated Learning of Cohorts? Um, also came out yesterday. And this so far from this fella, Sam, is I think the best explanation of what Flock is and how it works. Um, so if you're worried or interested, this is worth going over. And you'll notice that this is why uh, we've got Alex and Yoshi. This is why... I'm led to believe that you're only in one cohort ever, um, just based off of this article. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to go over the whole damn thing because it's just too long, but notice that he talked about an ad tech platform might learn from an online shoe store that browsers from cohorts 1101 and 1354 seem interested in the store's hiking gear. So now, look what just happened to the value of these cohorts. We're going to get, instead of bidding, bidding on individual people, we're going to get people bidding on flocks, on cohorts. Um, Google is putting us in a position where we're, we're now, we're buying wholesale. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my goodness. They're selling us users wholesale. They, 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 they've moved up the value ladder and they just decided you can't just, you know, pay for one person. You have to pay for all of them. Um, it's, it's so interesting. There's this website that they rolled out, privacysandbox.com, because they want to pretend like this is, you know, somehow, this is like Google pretending that the UN has any power. You know, this is when the U.S. decides that we're going to go get another country's oil. And, uh, by the way, the U this is U.N. sanctioned, so it's fine. Um, uh, that's awesome. So, anyway, um, this is all I got. This is all I, this is, I don't know what's going to happen. I'll include links uh, in the description of this video. I'd love your, your, your thoughts and opinions on this, by the way, if you have them. Um, because this is going to be something that we all have to contend with. And it's nuts to me that there's not more noise here. Um, that's the thing that really kind of worries me. I don't think people see what's coming. Either that or I'm just like legit chicken little and don't understand. I don't know. I don't know. 
this is going to be interesting to watch, maybe a little fun to watch. Um, I can tell you one thing, though. It's going to make agency so much more valuable. Uh, you try contending this with this by yourself, you know. Um, and, man, that's coming from an agency guy. Maybe that's just, you know, my cognitive dissonance speaking because I want to believe that to be true. But I, I, wouldn't, want to, I wouldn't want to fly solo at the moment. Anyway, thanks for watching. Really love you all. I'll see you tomorrow.